the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me the of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and just to deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings of death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, and for us and for me. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Righteous are you, O Lord, and right are your are your decrees. Deal with your servant according to your steadfast word, and teach us your statutes. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Thank you. 
Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, we implore you, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the devil and with pure hearts and minds to follow you. The only God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 17th Sunday after Trinity is from Proverbs chapter 25. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. What your eyes have seen, do not hastily bring into court. For what will you do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame? Argue your case with your neighbor himself, and do not reveal another's secret, lest he who hears you bring shame upon you, and your irrepute have no end. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in the setting of silver, like a gold ring or an ornament of gold is a wise reprover to a listening ear. Like, a cold, like the cold of snow in the time of harvest is a faithful messenger to those who send him. He refreshes the soul with his, of his master. Like clouds of wind without rain is a man who boasts of a gift he does not give. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all their toes. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 4. I, therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. because he heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you, having a son or an ox, that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out. And they could not reply to these things. Now he told a parable to those who were invited. 
when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, when you are invited to by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this person. And then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit at the lowest place, so that when the host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
us pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, because you are our God and you call us to be your people. We thank you, Lord, that you called us to be your witnesses and prepare us to bear witness to the faith which lies within us. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Words for today's meditation come from Jesus' words to, his, to the apostles before he ascended to heaven. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you. Then you will be my witnesses to testify about me in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This is our text. This past, this past summer, a good friend of mine uh, called me up and asked me a few questions because he was going to be going to the Grand Canyon. And he asked me, Steve, what should I do? Because I only have one day to go there. What should I do on that day? Now the question is, why did he call me up? Well, it could be because he knew that for nine years I lived here in Arizona. And so I may have seen a few programs about it. I may have read some articles in, in, the, in a magazine about the Grand Canyon. But as you, many of you know, that's not why he called me. Because he knew that I had a personal experience with the Grand Canyon. He knew that I had crossed the Grand Canyon, gone rim to rim three times. And so because of that, he said, this guy knows a thing or two about this place. And so he called me up and asked me, what should I do? Today we, today's gospel, or today's text begins with these words, you will be my witnesses. And he was say, saying these words to, his, to the apostles. But the question is, why? Why of all the people did he say to them, you will be my witnesses? Well, the reason why is, is quite simple. Because they saw it all. They were there from the time that Jesus was baptized to now the time when he was ascending into heaven. They saw the things that he did. They heard the things that he taught. They, they saw him walk on water. They saw him calm the storms. They saw him feed 5,000 people. They saw him heal people over and over again. They even saw people brought back to, from the dead and resurrected. So they knew by his actions that there was something that was different about this man. Not only did they see the things that he did, they heard the things that he taught. Like in today's gospel lesson, he challenged them. He challenged them and made them rethink things that, that they thought were, were true, but they realized there was a greater truth behind them. For example, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. They realized, Jesus taught them that it's not just enough to obey the, the outside framing of it, but that the law was, was, was given to us to demonstrate God's love. And God, not only God's love that comes into us, but God's love which pours out from us. And all through this, Jesus was teaching them something new, showing them a better and greater way. But there's one teaching which really was a make it or break it for who Jesus was. If he really was a prophet. If he really was a servant of the Lord. And that was a teaching that he gave on a variety of occasions. One time he was in the temple. He was confronted by the people and he said, destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. He was talking about his body. He was predicting his resurrection. He also said, no other sign do I give you than this, the sign of Jonah, who was in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. So must the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth. And then there was times that he told his disciples, the Son of Man must go to Jerusalem. There he'll be handed over, be persecuted, and killed. But the third day he will rise again. This is what the make it or break it thing. If Jesus had not risen from the dead, he would have been a great miracle worker. He would have been a great teacher. But he would not have been anything more than that. The fact that he rose again 
let it be known that he really was who he said he was. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Through his resurrection, the apostles realized who Jesus truly was. And now these disciples were called out to be his witnesses. They were called out to go to the people and say, this is what we've seen. This is what we've heard. And this Jesus who died, who rose again, and now who is ascended into heaven, truly is the Son of God. He truly is the Savior of the world. He truly is our one hope. His resurrection changed everything. And because Jesus lives, we know that we too shall live because of that. God has said to each and every one of you as well, you shall be my witnesses. Now granted, we weren't there when Jesus walked. We weren't there when we weren't there to hear Jesus' teachings or to see his miracles. But God has revealed his grace to us. He has poured his love into our lives. And we are witnesses of the good things that God has done. We are witnesses that God is a faithful God. We are faithful that he who called us is faithful. And so we are then also called to be his witnesses, to let other people know the great things that God has done for us. Because the truth of the matter is, in one regards, we have it better than the apostles who walked with Jesus. It may seem like a strange thing to say, but that's what, what Scripture says as well, because we see things fulfilled. We know how the story ends. We know that, we know from, from the very beginning, that this Jesus who was born in a manger is the Son of God, the Word incarnate. The, flesh became dwelt, the, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We know that Jesus is more than, than a miracle worker. We know that he's more than just a great teacher. And the reason why we know? Because he lives. Because he conquered the grave. Because he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. We know it because he has come into our life and said to us, I am your God and you are my people. And so with our life, we are God's witnesses now. But there's something interesting about this word in Greek, witness. The Greek word there is martyrus. And if you listen a little closely, I'll take off the last part of it, martyr. Those who are called to be witnesses are also called to be willing to lay down their life for the Lord. And the, and the disciples, they did that. Which is a testament about the the faithfulness of our, of our, our message, the, which is the testimony to the truth of the gospel. Because if they did what some people propose that they did, that is, move the body of Jesus someplace so that they could propagate this lie that Jesus was resurrected, when it got to the point of, of being killed on account of their faith, they probably would have said, you know, we did something a long way, long time ago. After Jesus rose, we wanted to make sure people thought that he was who he, who he taught himself to be. But none of them did that. Why? Because they saw Jesus living. He came to them on the night of, of, of what we call Easter. The night of the resurrection, Jesus stood before his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Your sins are forgiven. They were on the mountain when Jesus ascended to heaven and gave them this commission to be his witnesses. And each of the gospel, each of the apostles were willing to die for this faith. Most of them did. One who did it was John. And it wasn't for lack of trying. They tried to kill John. They boiled him. But, it, but that attempt at martyrdom did not take. And when they saw there was nothing they could do with John, they put him on an, on an island, try to keep him away from everybody. But because of that, the Lord provided us with the last book of the, of the Bible, the book of Revelation. 
when we are, we're confirmed, we made a commitment. There's a, there's a vow that we, we made when we were confirmed, and that was this. I am willing to die for my faith rather than to give it up. Each and every one of us who are confirmed have made that vow, saying that this faith is the most important thing to me. This understanding that of who Jesus is, what he's done, and what he's called me to be, is more important than, than life itself. Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. We're all called to be willing to lay our life down for our Lord. And the reason why? Because we know that our God is a faithful God. We know that he has loved us with an everlasting love. We know that he's walked it with us through difficult times. And as a result of that, we are his witnesses. One of my favorite verses comes from 2 Corinthians. May the God of all comfort comfort you, so that you may comfort one another with the comfort that you have received. Sometimes the trials that come our way come because they're preparing us to be a witness to the person who comes after us, who's, go, who's going through that trial as well. And then the gospel, then his command continues. He says, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, a lot of times when we hear this, we think geographically. And we think, where's our Jerusalem? Where's Judea? Where's Samaria? The end of the earth, we kind of got that figured out. But I don't want us to think about this as geographically. I want us to think about this, I think the Lord did as well, think about this as far as people. Who, who are our Jerusalem? And the answer to that, for us here, is the people here at St. Paul. We are called to be witnesses to one another. You are called to lift up one another. You are called to encourage one another, especially when things are difficult. Because Jerusalem are the people who look like us, people who talk like us, the people who think like us, the people who have the same culture. This is our Jerusalem. And, and for, for us, it's... St. Paul, it begins right here. And that, is, that means that you have a ministry to one another. But then it continues by saying Judea. Now Judea is similar. It's just a little further out. Our, our Judea would be those other Lutheran churches within our circuit. Trinity, Mount, Mount, Mount Calvary, um, crown of life, apostles, all those other Lutheran churches which, which are part of our circuit. And why? Because they're people, once again, who are, who are like us, who believe the same, who teach the same, who proclaim the same. But then there's Samaria. And Samaria is where it gets a little more difficult. Because many, many of you know from reading the Bible, that the Jews and the Samaritans didn't get along very well. They were close to them, but their culture was different. Their language was a little different. Their, their values were a little different. But Jesus says, you'll be witnesses to them as well. And part of the reason for that is because when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't do it just so that we could pick and choose who we can love who we can share God's grace with, his mercy with. Because when Jesus died on the cross, he died for all people. One of the great visions that he's given to us in Scripture is that around the, crown of, around the throne of God, people of every language, every tongue, every tribe will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And finally, he says, to the ends of the earth. That's where missionaries come in. Because missionaries are called by God to, to go out. Go out to a people far away. Sometimes a people who, who's, well, always the culture is different. Sometimes the language is different. The values are different. Life is different in a foreign land. And God calls people to go there to serve. And by the grace of God, 
He's, he's called me to go and, and serve in, return to Guatemala to Santiago, Samora. And a people who have been without a pastor for seven years, a people who, who when I first saw them, I said, these are a, a, like sheep without a shepherd. And God, God is sending me there. And why? Because these people are important to him. These people need to know the comfort of having a pastor. They need to, to be assured and reminded of God's faithfulness. As I go, it, it kind of reminds me of something we celebrated this past summer. Remember, we, we remembered the 50th anniversary of the lunar landing. You know how many astronauts went up, right? There are three. Three astronauts went up. Two landed on the moon, but, but three went up and three came back. But the question is, how many people did it take to send up those three people? One of the great things about Google is you can search it up and found out that 400,000 people helped put those three people up on the moon. I know there's a lot of difference with it and everything, but I kind of like to think that as missionaries go out, they're like those astronauts. They're the ones who go, go out. They go out with a lot of fanfare, but it needs people behind who support. And that's where you guys come in. You, you help support the missionaries who go out with your prayers, most importantly, with financial support as well. Sometimes going down physically and helping with a short-term mission trip. But we're called to go out because God's love is for all people. When Jesus died, he died for all people. When he ascended to heaven, he's calling out and praying for all people. Because it's God's will is this, that all men be saved. And so there are those of us who go out to the ends of the earth. Now, I deliberately didn't include the beginning of, of the verse of this Great Commission, because a lot of times that's where we begin by saying, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. But did you hear what came before that? When the Holy Spirit comes to you, you will be my witnesses. This is, how it be, this is our comfort. This is our encouragement. That when God sends us out, he doesn't send us by ourselves. When I go to Guatemala, I'm not going to be going there by myself. God goes with me and God goes before me. And that's the same for each and every one of you as we go out as his witnesses to our Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to maybe even the ends of the earth. The certainty that we have for that is that each and every one of us. Uh, I love the, for, the, the um, positioning of the font in front and the, and the candle reminding us of who we are. We are God's people, not because of who we are, but because of what God has done for us. Through the waters of baptism, God said to you, you are my child. Through the water of baptism, God said, today I begin a good work in you, and I will bring it to completion. I will be faithful to you. Not only do we have that promise in the, Lord, in, in the baptism, but also in the Lord's Supper. Every time we come to the Lord's table, we are reminded that Jesus is faithful to that promise that he made when he gave the Great Commission, which ends, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. At the Lord's, at the Lord's table, he reminds us, I am with you. I have not left you. I have not forsaken you. I, I continue to walk with you side by side. And so as we go out, we don't go out by ourselves. We don't go out by our own will, by our own understanding. We go out because God goes with us and God goes before us and God goes after us. God does not leave us. He does not forsake us. And so for that reason, he says, I will be with you. I will strengthen you. I will teach you. I will guide you along the way. And as you go out, you will be my witnesses. Praise God for that calling. Praise God for that commissioning. And praise God that he is faithful. Amen. And now may the grace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in faith and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us continue praying for the whole people of God according to your mercy. Please stand. Peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace that is from above, and for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For St. Paul Lutheran Church, for those who serve this congregation, for those who in faith, piety, and fear of God come to receive his gifts and praise his name, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For our synod and for our sister churches, for our synodical district presidents, Matthew and Michael, and for our circuit visitor, Philip, for all godly pastors and teachers, and for all peoples of God who serve God and, and neighbor in their various vocations, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all missionaries and workers of mercy at home and abroad, especially the Oliver family in Taiwan and the De Groot family in Albuquerque, let us pray to the Lord. For our nation, all people, and for our president and congress, our governor and legislature, our judges and magistrates, and all who serve in public office, for our police officers, firefighters, and emergency workers, for our military personnel at home and abroad, for all who suffer from legalized abortion in our nation, for mothers and fathers, siblings and grandparents, for medical personnel, and for all who live in such evil days, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For those celebrating joyous occasions, that they would rejoice in the rich blessings of God and offer him heartfelt thanks and praise, always remembering that every good and perfect gift comes from our Heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For the sick and the suffering, for those who mourn, for those in need and distress, for the refugee and sojourner, for all pregnant women, for the newborn and the elderly, for the homebound and infirmed, especially those who, we've, who we have prayer to ask for this day. Remember Dorothy, Doc, Otilia, Pat, Judith, Nicholas, Linda, Jim, Linda Lee, Gary, Dan, and Laura. Be with them, Lord, and watch over them. Lord, in your mercy. Remembering those who have gone before us in the faith and rejoicing to share with them the Sabbath of rest which Christ won for his people, that together with them we may be found faithful to, in the day of judgment and rejoice in the day of the resurrection of the dead. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we here remember the suffering and the death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Praising his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his, res his ascension before you, where he stands for us as our high priest. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone we give all glory, honor, worship, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly me, right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. <coughs> For our sake, he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. This is my body given for you. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. But he given thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is new test my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. strengthen and preserve you to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen.
Mary continue with the next two minutes. that you are refreshed through, through this life-giving gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you have strengthened us through the same in faith towards you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.